mind your business and you won't be minding. I just let him. Welcome back. You're listening to Mind Your Own Business on AM 1220, hometown station, KHTS. And we have a great guest in the studio today. And if I was still in school, I would be terrified because report cards are coming out. I don't come out anymore. Peggy Canastrasi. Math Support Services. Math Support Services on a Railroad, right? Is it Railroad or Bouquet? It's actually it's on Bouquet. It's on Bouquet. Right I was next to confused. the IHOP restaurant. This Give minute it's Bouquet. So. <laughs> right next to IHOP, right next to Tea Gardens in yes. that area. Yes. And, uh, Wait, time out, Ed. So you're saying in high school you got lousy grades? Yeah, we don't even talk about it. There's my half cup empty deal. <laughs> I was one of those kids that had a special treatment on their spelling test. So they you could have used. They wrote the whole sentence, I only wrote the word. Done. So you could have really taken advantage of Peggy's services back I really could have. Okay. I mean, she would have hated me being in her tutoring, but. I I yes, she would have. have <laughs> like, she would have. It's like everybody requests a class without Ed, but. Um, so Peggy, oh, that's we, what makes it fun. <laughs> it is uh, the, the kids that ask, I'm always the guy that was in the room that asked the question that everybody else wanted to ask but didn't because everyone looked stupid. That's a good thing. I still do that to this day. Yes, you do. We did it yesterday. <laughs> what was that? Uh, it, oh, it was Chinese uh, lottery right. at the the the, the, the Canyon Country Merchant Association. Now, explain to me what a Chinese lottery is again. So you put those things in. So Peggy, tell me about. You have a very unique organization. And you've done some interesting things to help local parents. Tell me what your business does and what sets you aside from all the other well, tutors. I started out with tutoring, and we still see about 250 students a week just for the tutoring program, which is to help them survive the class that they're taking at school. We do upper level math and science all the way through the APs, and uh, lots of chemistry and physics, uh, math, tons of math, especially geometry, algebra 2 trig, pre -calc calculus. Uh, and that program is just a mainstay. Uh, back in 1997, we were the first to apply and receive a full accreditation through Western Association of Schools and Colleges, which allows us to actually do coursework. They can literally take the class at Mass Support Services and send the grade and the transcript over to their high school, and it will be accepted and used for college admissions. That sounds like a great idea. I mean, I'm sure. It would have been great when I was in high school to be able to pay to get a different teacher if I didn't feel like I was responding. And my son actually got in the top 2% of math people on the scores for the state, but the teacher was giving him a D. But it's not really just the teacher. It's a lot about the structure of the way things have evolved. You, right now, you have between 35 and 40 kids in a classroom. And the teacher has this curriculum that they have to get through in a certain amount of time. They're not the students who are in the class don't always have the requisite skills to be in the class because they were weak somewhere along the line and someone passed them forward. So our approach is to like, let's kind of just do one-on-one, -on -one. let's see where you're at, let's see what holes we have to plug, but let's focus on today. What are you doing today? Our, and not just today, what did you do yesterday and the day before? What's coming tomorrow? To try to get all of the topics linked where they can make sense out of it, and it's not just pieces that don't fit it's together. It's a whole sentence instead of just one. Yeah, exactly. You've got to fit the pieces together, and they have to be in an environment where they feel comfortable. Most teenagers are not going to raise their hand and ask a question about, how do I do fractions when I'm in Algebra 2? But you would be surprised how many kids still don't get those concepts. I know what I struggled with looking back is I wouldn't get the first piece I get so frustrated that I couldn't get the first piece, I just kind of gave up, you know? It's easier to look lazy than look stupid. Ooh. And a lot of parents oh. think their children are lazy, and they're not. They've just given up because if they have to protect their ego. And so you're looking at them saying, why aren't you doing your homework? Well, because they don't know what, where to even start. And the parents don't either. I couldn't help them after fourth grade. Yeah. Well, I get that confession on a daily I basis. Mean, <laughs> I wish I had a dollar for every time That's I right. got it's that like, confession. That's right. I can't help them anymore. If you can't learn it yourself, you're on, so, you're on your own. Peggy, who are your clients? And if who's, mom and dad are listening right now or the student, I mean, they're struggling in any of these areas, they should just get on the phone and call you. How do they get absolutely. started? Absolutely. We have a variety of students that come to us. We have many who are very highly intelligent, but they may have attention deficit disorder. They might have learning disabilities. They may be just the, the student where it is very focused on doing honors and AP coursework, and they're at the high end, and they're scared. You know, they get to a point where it's like, oh, am I supposed to be here? I'm not sure that this, this uh, fits any longer. 
we looked at our demographics and the, we mostly see high school kids. We see quite a few junior high, but high school is the predominant group uh, and upper level math. The um, schools have lots of intervention programs and they just keep moving Final them amendment. through. Algebra 1 uh, gets repeated multiple times uh, because that's the state requirement. And once they head past that, it, when it's college level requirements, uh, students get really they concerned. They need the grades. And they need the grades, absolutely. It's a monetary thing so as well as a when the ba basics thing, right? Right. And when the tutoring is not enough, when they like, replace, you know, they, then they need to replace the grade or they just work better in a small environment. Our classes, our class size average is eight students. And we do a very different kind of program that's based on mastery learning. Is so it competitive? I mean, is it really expensive to have them go to your place or is it really uh, affordable? Well, when you look at the national average for tutoring, we're about 40% less cost than the national one -on -one. average. Okay. And it is one on one, but we do volume, so we can afford to do it for less. The classes is a very unique uh, environment. Uh, there are some. Uh, other things I can can you, can you stay over? We got to take a break and we'll be right back.